what's up collective i'm back with more messages for you guys like i said we are going over the egyptian gods and goddesses what energies that are around us at this current moment um this is the book i will be referring to that we will be reading out of i am using this i don't want to move my dice because that's what i'm referring to what i wrote from the first video so this is a continuation from the last video if you guys didn't see the last video please watch the video first of the um the book of doors to catch where i'm going with these messages um without further ado let's go ahead and continue where we left off at at shu tefna shu tefna are twins that came together um uh that formed <laughs> civil, civil civilization is what i'm picking up so without further ado let's go ahead and tap and back into the twins let's go shu tefna and it goes like this. This is the ending of the paragraph, okay, guys? And it reads, As the heir of the God of space who exists between the earth and the heavens, Shu is often depicted as holding up the sky with his hands, one supporting it as at one supporting it at the place of sunrise, and the other at the place of sunset. He is also commonly shown separating Jeb from the heavenly nut, forcing himself between them and allowing light to penetrate the atmosphere for the first time, thus beginning the creation of life on earth. Divinatory meaning, it means attraction of opposites, harmonious and beneficial union and partnership. I have a yellow flower on my screen, 606 on the screen. You might want to look up that angel number. Yellow is referring to um, God is here. The creator is here guiding me. God is a godly color that it's just letting you know that the creator is here guiding me with these messages and to guide towards you guys. Okay. You might want to look up that meaning and yellow of uh, the flower also means God is at work and the color yellow, like I just said, means that the creator is present with the, with me right now. Okay. So let's go ahead and go to the next one. And it's Seth is here with us too, guys. It says throne also to cut tail stone um, is what Seth also mean, but we finna, Seth mean, but we finna dig into these messages, guys. So bear with me as I read these messages. If you are not interested in lecturing or um, knowing uh, hidden knowledge or deeper uh, profound knowledge, I suggest you to go ahead and leave um, this site now, now, my page now, because not only are we here doing tarot, but we are here learning on higher uh, planes on to extend higher in our DNA. So in spiritual. So let's continue with these messages. I can also be talking to a Taurus because when I rolled the dice, I don't I don't think I mentioned this the first time, but when I rolled the dice, it rolled on my Taurus on my birth chart sheet. So I could be talking to a Taurus, um, Earth sign energy. Okay, guys. So without further ado, let's read about Seth. The guy Seth is one of the epo. Go mental. I may not can't pronounce these words uh, as well, so y'all bear with me. I'm just keeping it real. So let's go. <laughs> the God Seth is one of the epigon mental or intercalary gods, intercalary gods born from the union of Jeb and Nut. He came into the world on the third day, and according to Plu. Plutarch, he was born neither at the proper time nor by the right place by forcing his way through a wound which he had made in his mother's side. A very ancient netter, Seth ruled the southern lands of not only Egypt but also a larger part of Nubia and the Libyan deserts where Heru wears the golden red crown of the northern realm. Seth is often depicted wearing the silver white, silver white crown of the hot southern lands. His worship was widespread in early di di dynastic times, and he was called upon as a friend in the Duat to help the deceased climb the ladder into he heaven. The Book of the Dead, the decree, the, the deceased asks for Seth's favor, saying, Homage to thee, O divine leader. Homage to thee, O ladder of Seth. 
Stand thou upon right, O divine ladder. The ladder leading into the heavens evokes the celestial nature attrib attributed to Seth in earliest times. Gerald Massey identifies Seth as the son of the primordial mother, Ty Art or Apeet, and directly links him with Set Sirius in his name of Soot, meaning the South, and with the great bear constellation called Kepspeth, spelled K-H-E-P-E-S-H, -E -E if anybody wants to reference that. In later dynamics, however, Seth became an outcast, detested and exiled by the Egyptians, and even the animals that bore resemblance to him were despised. despised. His most common Im image is that of a man with an animal's head that has a long nose and ears. The origin of this strange animal is unknown, but it was possibly a creature that became extinct early in Egypt's history. Seth's, Seth's tail was a vital element in the said festival. It was worn by the pharaoh as he re enacted the ancient ritual in which earth energies were drawn up through the tail and assimilated into the body for both physical and magical rejuvenation. In other ceremonies, Desert animals under Seth rulership, such as the antelope and gazelle, were ritually sacrificed in the search for the Eye of Heru, the, the serious fire imprisoned in the flesh. In all accounts, Seth is the principle of fixation, the one who binds the living fire into matter. The lands that Seth rules are the scoring deserts, are deserts, the barren and burned tracks devoted of life because in those places the rain never fails the insidious scheming and treachery 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 of seth is likened to the power of the drought in op opposition to the fertile inundation of the nile and the generative power of his brother asar nabit het seth's wife is as barren as her husband until she sleeps with Asar and conceives Anpu, the jackal-headed guide. Through the darkness of Aminta conceives Anpu, the jackal-headed guided through the darkness of Aminta. For living fire to be liberated from its ter terrestrial prison, the in, in Eritra and fixation of Seth First, have to overcome and despair. For the living fire to be liberated from the terrestrial prison, prison, the inetra and fixation of Seth first have to be overcome and despaired. For Asar to experience resurrection, he must first experience death at the hand of his brother. Seth dismembers Asar in order to for the God to be reconstituted, cons reconstituted alchemically, the elements have first to be separated in order to form a new conjunction. And this renewal is the res resurrection at the coming forth by day. From the earliest myths, Seth has an opposition to the light and life-giving rays of the sun continually scheming against the ordered flow of nature and disrupting the harmony of Egypt under the rulership of Aset and Asar. From earliest times, Heru and Seth were regarded as twin gods and equal in every respect in their own attribute exactly opposite in every way. Heru, I don't know why my eyes is watering up, guys. Oh, God. Maybe somebody's crying. I don't know, but somebody could be very emotional. I don't know, but I'm picking up that energy. I'm crying. I don't have anything to be sad about. I'm picking up on somebody's energy, but let me continue. Now, let me start. Um, where did I leave off it? Okay. 
and I got emotional for some reason. So let's start from right here. From the earliest myth, Seth has an opposition to the light and life-giving rays of the sun, continually scheming against the ordered flow of nature and disrupting the harmony of Egypt under the rulership of Aset and Asar. From earliest times, Heru and Seth were regarded as twin gods and equal in every respect with their own attributes exactly opposite in, in every way. Heru or Heru the Elder was God of the day sky. Seth was God of the night sky. As Heru personified light in life, light in life, so Seth personified darkness and death. The accounts of the battles Seth waged against Heru are satur saturated with the blood of divine slaughter. In the first form of the story, Heru and Seth represent the nature opposition of the night and day. In the second version, Seth appears as the monster serpent, a pip, trying to prevent Ra from rising in the east. In other version, Seth tricks the murders Seth, Seth tricks and murders his brother Asar and tries to kill the child Heru through a scorpion sting to avenge his father and take his place as lawful ruler of Egypt, Hero encounters his impactful implacable opponent in a battle that lasts for three days. At first Hero and Seth fight as men, then in the form of bears, finally victorious, Hero delivers Seth bound in chains to his mother. I said I said but she would not allow his death because he is, he is a vital he he is as vital to the plan of creation as her own child as vital as her sister Nephet. Seth is associated with the color red, the metal iron, as Heru is associated with the idol stone and with the planet Mars. And in divination meaning, it means opposition, opposition, strife, retreat, and preferable to defeat, guys. So that is some knowledge on who is Seth to us. And Seth is in our energy because I pulled it on uh, the divination dice here. So we're going to move to our next um, divination number here. So we have went over two. We have went over set so far and we have went over Shu Kefnut now and we know Shu Kefnut are two um beings that came together to uh to um create civilization here yeah and we know Seth represents the darkness or the afterlife here okay so let's continue to go towards our next lesson so we're going to be talking about Jeb Nut Shoe now. <laughs> I, I like how these are lining up, <laughs> how the storyline is lining up as to how I'm reading this out to you guys. So this is beautiful how they are guiding me with, with me with these messages, guiding me to you guys with these messages. Everything is lining up perfectly. So without further ado, we're going to go ahead and read the divination number, number six, which represents Jeb Nut Shoe. I'm going to turn around so I can get comfortable, guys, so I can read this to you. Okay, and it goes like this. As one of the eight primordials, primordials Nut was a very ancient goddess representing the wastery, watery abyss from which everything emerged. Her male outer counterpart was Nu, but she was also described as being the wife of Jeb, the earth god, and as the daughter of Shu and Tefnut. Her titles include Nut, the lady of heaven, the mistress of goddess, and Nut, the great lady who gave birth to the gods. She is shown here as the queen of space, her body sparkling with stars and arched over the earth. In this attitude, she personifies the heavens and the sky the body over which the sun god passes daily. Her arms and legs from four pillars on which the sky was believed to rest and which mark the di directions of the cardinal points. Shu stands between Nut and Jeb, separating the earth from the heavens. By this act, he allows the sun to shine through the atmosphere, which was pre previously in darkness, 
torn from his lover's embrace, Jeff is forced to live independently from her as the earth solidifies the space. The red and black triangles signify the alchemical process of separation with the black phase incorporating death and corruption and red being the animation of new life. In the words of the Emerald Tab in the words of the Emerald Tablet, thou shalt separate the earth from the fire, the subtle from the dense in from the gents gently, and with great in ingenuity and with the great ingenuity it rises from earth to heaven and gain descendants into earth and it receives the strength of things above and below guys so let's continue this reading the separation is necessary for union on a higher plane of existence the separation and coagulation of the alchemical elements produce a new Substance, unlike the original materials, Shu and Tefna are created to are created and separated from Atom. Jeb and Nut are created and separated from each other, so the lineage of gods may be continued. Their own offspring are Offset, Asur, Seth, Hiru, and Nephet. Who they are who complete the family of the sun, divinity meaning separation, the necessity for independent action. Okay, guys, take those messages as you see fit. The next one we are going to read is Heru, that which is above. So let's continue. I'm just looking and see. All right, let's go. Heru or Horus is one of the best known in Egyptian gods. Though out the dynasties, he was widely worshipped, widely worshipped from very earliest period of Egyptian history. The name Heru means that which is above and is in the form of Hawkhead mean man wearing the red and white crowns of the South and Northern United. In the north and south united that these nectar is usually depicted he holds the unk of life a bow and arrow in his right hand and a club in his left above the double crown is the eye of hero the hawk was the first living creature to be worshipped throughout the double land and as the knee sighted ruler of the air and heights of heavens the hawk became the sacred creature of the king of the gods, hero, and the symbol of divine kingship on earth. The royal power is hero incarnated on earth, and as the pharaoh becomes hero, he has the right to rule as the son of Aset ruled over all Egypt. Many forms of hero are described in Egyptian mythology. Some of the most prominent beings, hero, the elder. Heru er <laughs> H E R U slash E R He E Ru Batut He Aru Sa As Sa Asar He Aru the son of Aset and Asar is what that means. So let's continue. Heru and Elder Heru the Elder was a primordial netter a solar principle who by day was the face of heaven as Seth was the face of night. The sun was referred to as the eye of Heru, one of the eyes through which the serious energies are transmitted. The other eye of Heru was the moon shining with the reflected light of the sun as the power of the heart as the power are as the power of the heat of the sun, he was Hero Batut, crowned with the double winged sun disc in Arari, the power which fills all heaven and the world with his brilliance and light. But it was Hero, son of Aset, who appealed most strongly to the Egyptian imagination. He was the great warrior who destroyed the who destroyed the enemies of Ra with without 
without mercy and in his eternal battle with Seth the cosmic drama of light and darkness was most vividly portrayed Hero's archetype is the victor and winner who obtains what he is fighting for he was born from Aset after she had received the dead body of, of Arsar and he grew up with one great passion to reclaim his father's heritage from the unsurprising Seth and and avenge his father's death. When Egypt was divided into two kingdoms, he ruled the fertile deltas of the north, while Seth ruled the arid deserts of the south. The final victory of Heru gave him kingship over the two lands an event which has been interpreted historically as the conquest of the southern lands by a king from the north. Even a young child, Hero, was confronted by Seth's enmity, 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 e n m i t, enmity, and the scorpion sent to kill him almost succeeded. But for Tahuti's intervention, he grew up to be from a formidable warrior trained by his father and armed with an iron spear and chains with which he killed and bound his enemies. In this form, he was called Hero, the avenger of his father. The battles against Seth and Apep were filled with slaughter. Heru was praised by Ra for his courage in defending the life and life-giving powers of the sun for Heru was Ra himself reborn the sun god victorious over death the, yes the sun victorious over death mm. damn that's deep oh lord that's deep okay I felt some type of way when I said that but let me continue reading for my video cut off let's continue from this from this birth in the delta Heru is the divine light held earthbound by Seth. His light is eternal struggle between light and darkness. The fundamental polarity between cosmos and chaos. Exploring this po polarity further. Exploring this polarity further. This is written by Scritzer D. Lopez and it reads like this. Paranomic or paranomic myth shows Seth and Horus as enemies. The one and the other, Plato's same and other, the fundamental session. I'm going to skip that part because I don't understand this. The ultimate realization is known, friendship. Yeah, I'm just going to skip that for right now and I'm going to continue reading the chapter, guys, because I don't see how that's fan any um, beneficial knowledge in this. I'm just getting... One, it just says, what, Horus as enemies. It says, myth shows that Seth and Horus are enemies. Okay, it's just basically saying that they are enemies. And we already know this by reading, so we're just going to continue. Because it, it's just referencing, so we're going to continue with the other part of the paragraph, okay? Uh, to finish up this reading. Okay, let's go. Hero obtains the power of his father, not by killing Seth, but rather by keeping Seth under control, by keeping a balance between these two principles as the solar principle he is intimate intimately involved with the creation and rulership of the world radiating energy and illuminating the earth but by its very nature the sun casts a shadow the same shadow hero's twin against which he must continually struggle in the duat hero helped the dead, even as he helped his own father by meditating between the judges of the Duat and the soul of the deceased. He raised up the ladder that reached into heaven and held it in place while the, the deceased climbed up from the darkness into the light of Ra. He watched over the funeral rites and ceremonies of Asar and was assisted by the Afnuture. His four sons who hold, who hold up the pillars of heaven. The way of Heru is the royal way of the sun, the direct path of magical transformation. While his father, Asar, represents the past, Heru is the eternal 
present. While Asar dies to be resurrected, Haru partakes at, of Asit's immortality and is the ever-living God. Another form of Heru is the young child Heru Pipkart, a newborn baby emerging from a lotus with one finger held in his to his lips. In this aspect, Heru is the per, is the personification of the rising power of the sun, the power within seed beginning to sprout. That is a beautiful and strong message. And this, and I want to read this from Skolovar Devlovich. Levich, excuse my language, guys, but it reads this: Isis comes to the Orishas. Osiris, I'm sorry. I don't know what made me say Orishas. Maybe the Orishas is here guiding me with these messages, but let's go. Isis comes to the Osiris, joyous in thy love. Your seed rises in her, penetrating like Sirius. They, the penetrating Horus comes from thee in his name of Horus, who is in Cyrus. Let's read that one more time. Isis comes. Isis comes to thee, Osiris, joyous in thy love. Your seed rises in her, penetrating like Sirius. The penetrating Horus comes forth from, comes from, comes forth from within. His name of Horus, who is in Sirius. That was beautiful. I like that. Poltrich describes Hero as having fair hair and fair complexion with blue eyes, like many. Okay, so I'm going to go, oh, I'm not going to feed into the, um, <laughs> uh, what you call it, um, whitewashing over our civilization because we know who the Egyptians are. We know we are the Egyptians or whatnot, <laughs> but I'm going to read it just because, but we already know you have to read between the lines here, guys, and you know who you are, you know what you represent, um. But remember, there's going to be hijackers that's going to try to pretend to be you when we are the original, just so you know. But let's go ahead and read. It says, this this character says, uh, they describe Hiru as having fair hair and fair complexion with blue eyes like any other blonde and blue-haired solar gods of the traditions that carry and Sycamore are sacred to him. So like I said, we're going to look past the hijackers. I just put that out there so you guys to be aware of dodge the hijackers, okay? Uh, you know who you are. You know who you speak to. The, the, the divinitary meaning behind... Um, <clears throat> sorry. <clears throat> behind Hero is victory, the winner, triumph over adversity. So guys, you, you're whatever that you're going through, you're going <clears> to... <throat> <clears throat> excuse me, triumph over any adversities that sent your way. That's what I'm picking up with these divinity meanings. You will have victory. You are going to be a winner. You triumph over anything that's, excuse me, causing any um adversity your way. It's and it's and at times it is time for us to have separation. I'm also picking up with Jeb Netsu with divination meaning you also will have to go through separation in order for you to find your independence so you can take action to do to, to do the things necessary for you to move forward in life. Yeah. And I'm also picking up on um the um who is this? The energies from Asset. Yeah, and it's basically saying that you have magical knowledge and protection. You have great powers of inspiration and creativity, the bringing of life and honoring of the female principle in all parts. So that's good job. And and I'm looking for two. Just to bring these messages in to you guys, <clears throat> what I'm picking up from Divinity by reading this. And with, um, with Shun Technet, the Divinity, like I was saying, it brings in attraction, opposites. So you're going to have harmony, 
um, going towards you're doing. You're going to be very harmonious. You're going to beat your obstacles that you're going across. You, you are a very magical being, so you're going to be very magical in what you're doing. You may have had to separate from people so you can get to where you're getting to in life is what I'm picking up uh, with the gods is telling me. So continue to keep striving the way you're doing. Uh, keep passing along the journey you're doing. I just flipped to the page um, Amita. And Amita means um, in, in divinity. Going into the darkness, the, the quarant has only the self to rely on. And adventure into the unknown. So this is furthermore let me know that you guys are have wise, wise wisdom. That you are going into hidden places here. That you are tapping into unknown knowledge to wisdom. So great job collective. I hope these messages uh, resonate with you guys today. We are connecting with the gods. Our Egyptian gods and goddesses. I got the fire sign on here. 635 here. So you could be a fire sign who I'm talking to. Aries, Aries Sag, Leo. <laughs> Guys, I will be doing a, a spread on this book later on today. Without further ado, I hope these messages reach who it needs to reach. Namaste. Ashe. Amen. Mwah. Love you, collective. Talk to you soon. Bye.